so we have looked at many properties of delta functions and so in this lecture we will apply you know, some of these properties and to something called the Green's function method right so it's a powerful method for solving you know ordinary differential equations but it also appears in uh, you know, uh, when we are working with partial differential equations in higher dimensional uh, variants of the problem and so on right so it has you know varying levels of sophistication are possible so we will look at some very simple applications of the uh, you know Green's function method and we will use this as a you know method to firm up our understanding or you know, how to use uh, delta function properties of delta functions on the one hand but also of firm up our understanding of solving ordinary differential equations okay so the idea is that you know the Dirac delta function can pull out for you you know the value of a function at a point right we have seen how uh, you know if you take a function multiply by a Dirac function localized at some point integrate it can pull out for you the value of the function at that particular point right so now if we have some forcing function so we have seen that you know there is a homogeneous differential equation and then there is well, we can look at you know in general in homogeneous differential equations or where there is a forcing function involved so the uh, you know the core idea behind the Green's function method is to argue that you know you can think of this forcing function as being constituted of a continuous sequence of impulses right so if you have a function f of t which is your forcing function you can say that you know this forcing function is made up of lots of delta functions which all are you know because it's a continuous sequence they get integrated to form f of t and then we use the um, we make use of uh, the principle of superposition to, to add up the solutions of each of these you know tiny impulses we look at we find the solution for some impulse an arbitrary impulse and then we find the solution by adding up the solutions for all of these which will turn out to be an integral so it's possible to write down a, a formal integral solution for you know differential equations so this is best uh, you know explained with the aid of an example we will consider a very simple example which we are already familiar with we know how to solve it so this is the initial value problem corresponding to the harmonic oscillator which is undamped but which is forced so there is an external field applied to it so d squared x by dt squared plus omega squared x is equal to f of t so you imagine that it's at rest at time t equal to 0 so x of 0 is 0 x prime of 0 is also 0 so so the idea here of the Green's function method is to think of this f of t as you know being made up of lots of these delta function impulses but with weights f of t prime so you think of the function as actually a bunch of weights so from 0 to infinity all the way up to infinity you have f of t prime times delta of t prime minus t dt prime so this is like an identity of the delta function but when you look at this equation now we see that we can actually use this to think of you know any function in general as presenting weights you know f of t gives you t prime has information about weights corresponding to impulses at every point you know where the fun the functions values are defined so now we exploit you know the principle of superposition we say suppose we work out the solution not for this original differential equation as it is but for this differential equation where we have we have only a delta of t prime minus t sitting on the right hand side and so instead of having the full function f of t which is a hard problem in general so instead of that we will just put in a delta function there so it's just one of these impulses and argue that if we can find the solution for this so we will call the unknown here as g of t comma t prime because the impulse is applied at the point t prime right so the derivative of course uh, it must be emphasized is taken with respect to t alone t prime is your variable which you are introducing right and so then we have this unknown g of t comma t prime and uh, you know these boundary conditions still hold now these boundary conditions uh, will I mean it's uh, it's perhaps good to you know transfer it to explicitly to g right so that's what we we intend to do which is to say that g of uh, you know at time t equal to 0 t prime t prime is is 0 and g prime of 
t prime uh, 0 comma t prime is also 0. So that is the boundary, the initial value problem that we have. So the solution to such a problem if by some means we are able to find such a g which not only satisfies this differential equation but also these boundary conditions then this solution is, is called the Green's function of the particular problem that we are interested in. It is like a response of your function to an impulse which is applied to it. The forcing function is reduced to just an impulse and we claim that the solution to this problem is simply given by this integral. So the idea is that you treat your overall function the outside the forcing function as being made up of an integral of these impulses and therefore the solution must be an integral of the responses which are which is the Green's function right. So if you put just delta of t prime minus t you get g of t comma t prime. So if you put you know you multiply by f of t prime and then integrate 0 to infinity that is the actual response. So the you know that is the uh, uh, the input. So the output also must be just integral from 0 to infinity g of t comma t prime which is times f of t prime. So instead of delta of t, t prime minus t which is the input the output is g of t comma t prime then you have to do this integral right. So it seems very reasonable and in fact we can check that this works out. The way to verify this is to explicitly just plug this back into the differential equation. So we have to do d squared by dt squared or acting on x of t plus omega squared you know acting on x of t which you know in this case will be you know this integral is over t prime right. So the differentiation on the other hand is over t. So you have to be careful and but I mean it is clear that there is no problem with you know bringing in uh, so the differentiating with under the integral sign. So you get this d squared by dt squared plus omega squared g of t comma t prime multiplied by f of t prime. But then we, when we look at this stuff in the brackets, we see that you know this is nothing but delta of t prime minus t because that is how we obtain g. We obtain g by solving for this differential equation. So indeed this part, this stuff inside the brackets can be replaced by a delta function. But the delta function when you multiply it by f of t prime and you integrate, so you get f of t. Right, so it is delta of t prime minus t times f of t prime d prime which is nothing but the integral is going to give you f of t right which is what we want after all and ultimately we want our x of t to satisfy this property that d squared by dt squared x of t plus omega squared x of t is equal to f of t and we are done right and automatically the initial conditions x of 0 is going to be 0 if, because g itself is 0 so when you integrate this you know like every one of these coefficients is 0. So if you sum all these coefficients or integrate this you know the function it also is going to be 0 and likewise the derivative also is going to be 0 at t equal to 0. So automatically the boundary conditions are satisfied and therefore we are done right. So the only thing that remains is you know to be able to actually work out this Green's function which let us let us actually let us do this for this particular problem it is easy to do right. So we can use Laplace transforms to carry this out. So we have um, you know we need to solve for this differential equation with this boundary conditions which is uh, you know it is better to write these boundary conditions as in terms of g uh, instead of x. So we have these boundary conditions. So we take the Laplace transform throughout. So the second derivative is going to give us s squared and since the boundary conditions are you know very convenient for us you know, no other terms come in when you take the second the Laplace transform of the second derivative is simply s squared times the Laplace transform of the function itself. So which I am calling you know just capital G right maybe uh, you know maybe there is better notation for this or we could have just come called it Laplace transform of G you know this script L or something but it is okay from the context I hope there will be no confusion. So s squared times the Laplace transform of the Green's function G of s plus omega squared times you know the other again the Laplace transform g of s is equal to Laplace transform of the delta function is we have already worked this out it is e to the minus s t prime. So therefore you know we can solve for g of s we can solve for uh, g of s it is e to the minus s t prime divided by s squared plus omega squared 
and then all that needs to be done is to work out the inverse Laplace transform which we also know how to do for something like this when you have a you know some function for which inverse Laplace transform is known 1 over s squared plus omega squared we know it's just sine omega t but then if you want to do for e to the minus s t prime we know that you have to just multiply by a you know step function so in this case you get 1 over omega times sine of omega t minus t prime if t greater than t prime and it is 0 if t is less than t prime right so this is the uh, Green's function and a moment's thought uh, reveals that in fact this is uh, quite a reasonable answer right I mean you have you know nothing is happening to your system until t prime up, up to, so it better be 0 well, the response is 0 because you have not put up the system it is at rest up, you know starting from initial time t equal to 0 all the way up to t prime but at t prime there is some impulse given to it and after that you know for t greater than t prime of course you will get some response and that it's, it turns out is given by the sine of omega of t minus t prime the whole thing divided by omega. So once we have this using the prescription that we gave we can immediately write down the solution of the problem as uh, you know this integral. So this integral we have seen will go from 0 to infinity you know d, uh, where t prime goes from 0 to infinity g of t comma t prime. So in this case t prime uh, uh, you know t prime has to be uh, if t prime is greater than t it is 0. So t prime only uh, will go up to t in this case it is 0 to t 1 over omega sine of omega times t minus t prime or the whole thing multiplied by f of t prime d t prime right. So there is one uh, concrete example if we work it out we will see this even more explicitly and in fact this is a problem we have or a very similar problem is something we have already solved. Let us see what happens when you have a you know uh, uh, an undamped harmonic oscillator and when you put your external forcing function is sin omega t x of 0 equal to 0 x prime of 0 equal to 0. So it is exactly like the previous problem now I have provided what this f of t is if I take it to be sin omega t then the solution is given by this integral I have to work out this integral 0 to t 1 over omega sin of omega times t minus t prime the whole thing multiplied by sin of omega t prime dt prime which we can evaluate right. So this is a trigonometric identity which will use sin c sin d will be cos of c minus d right so minus cos of c plus d and then whole thing divided by 2. So if you work this out so you have uh, uh, cosine of omega t omega times t minus 2 t prime will come in and minus cosine of omega t. So if you you know carry out this integral you get two terms the first of these terms will be sin of omega t divided by 2 omega squared and the second one is minus t divided by 2 omega cosine of omega t. Right, so the first one you will recall is you know just the uh, you know it is the natural frequency of this harmonic oscillator sin of omega t. So in fact the same type of forcing function exists as the natural frequency. So clearly the system is, is being driven at resonance. So this sin of omega t itself cannot be a solution an onsort a suitable onsort for the particular solution you must or cosine of omega t is not you will have to choose t times sin omega t and t times cosine of omega t and then with appropriate coefficients and we seem to you know find that the, the, the only coefficient that comes out here is for cosine of omega t right and so uh, you get minus t over 2 omega cosine of omega t right. So this is the part which you know makes the system's amplitudes arbitrarily large because there is t sitting here and you know although there is there are oscillations but there is also going to be you know amplitudes becoming very very large right because your system is being uh, you know operated at resonance right. So this is a concrete example of you know the general method which is a very powerful method and finds applications in all kinds of you know uh, physical applications uh, uh, you know ODEs but also PDEs higher dimensions and some of which perhaps we will also look at but hopefully this is a you know a, a fairly simple introduction to a powerful technique the Green's function method that's all for this lecture thank you. Mm -hmm.